And here's what a bad tire looks like. Oh yeah. Can you see how out around that baby is? All right, everybody at home, this is <laughs> my test fixture. So I've got a uh, Dubro uh, prop balancer, and I use this to balance props on uh, uh, my quadcopter. And uh, very nicely made. Here's the best part, made in the USA. As you can see, then I have this vise just sitting on the workbench, and it's holding a bolt, a long bolt, and then the bolt head goes out and uh, gives me a reference point. So pretty simple setup. I've got it clamped to my workbench with this little small uh, quick grip clamp. And uh, as you can see here, it spins quite freely. Okay, I have my uh, test fixture set up here. And uh, I have that bolt as an indicator. So we're gonna check to see how out around this particular tire is off the summit. So let's turn this and you'll see that the tire almost touches the bolt head right in there which we're gonna move that just to slide them out till it touches this is my high mark I've got it marked there on the tire okay so they're barely scrubs now we're gonna go to our low point so let's check that out. I've got my uh, small scale here. It measures in tenths, which is real handy. And um, it's almost 0 0.2, as you can see. Next step is we're gonna remove all the beadlock screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, I've removed all the screws. There was 12 of them. And uh, now we're gonna peel this beadlock off. It's pretty slick and uh, you can see it threads into the rim just like the big trucks so uh, that's pretty cool um, it looks like this is super glued but I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to peel that loose and uh, without tearing the tire these tires are very soft and uh, so I'm gonna work on that and then I'll come back in when I have got it figured out well I'm making slow progress here the uh, wheel has been super glued and there's this groove right here that the tire fits down into and so in places it is very difficult to get out I'm still working on it you can kind of it's almost like taking a real tire off off a full-size rim full-size vehicle um, kind of break that bead back and uh, and it's kind of forcing that uh, super glue to let go um, in tough spots I actually have to take this knife and very carefully go right up against the edge of the groove while I'm pulling away um, and that may release it as well so just gonna have to take your time on this and the question is is this all all this really worth it um, I don't know. I'm doing it for my benefit and for yours, so uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so I finally got this torn apart here. Um, well, what can I say? <laughs> Very difficult to get the uh, tire off. Uh, as you can see, I've turned it inside out. It's still attached to the inside of the rim, uh, or be the back side of the rim. Um, I've pulled it off and of course if you're not familiar with these trucks they use a foam inner liner on the tire basically it acts like air in the tire keeps the the tire up and uh, if we look at that inner liner see if you can see this it is not round or not in round and uh, so let's see if I can demonstrate this carefully we're going to take a measurement there you can see it it fits and then if I go up here it doesn't fit all right so we have our uh, foam inner liner 
and it's a little thin right here so I believe that's causing us some uh, issues with our tire wobble so how do you fix foam well let me give you a hint the old steam gun so I went out there into the barn and the Project King junkyard <laughs> and I found this old uh, steamer that my wife had it, the nozzle broke off uh, so she wanted to throw it away of course being the project king I had to save it because you never know when you might need a steamer um, so we're gonna try this I don't know if this is gonna work this is what upholstery guys do with foam um, they will um, spray the foam with steam or inject it with foam with uh, steam excuse me and the foam will return back to its original shape. And that's what I'm hoping it'll do with our inner liner. So without further ado, let's get some steam going. Oh yeah. And see what happens. So this is our thin area. people this is all experimental so uh, I wouldn't necessarily try this at home uh, but I'll let you know if it works for me but do it at your own risk I tell you I think it is doing something this is a cool tool I don't know I I was going to get the old teapot out and get it boiling and, and use that, and I suppose that would probably work. This is awfully convenient. I know a lot of people are not going to have these at home. I, I do know they're pretty popular uh, for uh, clothing and that type of thing and steam cleaning. I suppose that's the one of the latest gadgets out there, but uh, this thing's pretty cool. So I'm going to continue steaming and I'll come back in a minute and we'll see if I've made any progress. I think we already have and uh, pretty, pretty interesting. I'd like to understand the physics behind why foam is revived by steam, but uh, anyway, we might get into that some other day. I'll be back. All right, so let's check out how we did with the steam gun. Got my uh, metric rule out here. And that looks like 36 to 37 millimeters right there. I don't know if you can see that very well. So it's running roughly 37 millimeters all the way around. Um, looks pretty consistent. I'm happy with that. All right, so I have the foam put back on the rim. And now I'm going to attempt to pull that rubber tire back over it. This is not ideal, unfortunately. Ideal, you put the, the foam inside the tire, and then you put the tire and the foam on the rim at once. Um, but maybe we can work with this a little bit. Of course, the foam acts as air for these small tires, holding them up. And the firmer the foam, the firmer your air pressure, quote unquote, is going to be. So, uh, of course, the trick is with me putting this foam back in there is to get that nice and smooth so that we don't have that lump problem again. Um, of course, it looks like the, the lump problem was due to the flat spot on the foam tire and that's due to the way the thing's stored probably when it's shipped and i'll send i'll uh, post a photo of that right now all right so you saw that photo um 
that truck's basically wedged in the box and uh, who knows how long it stays in that box and what temperatures it runs in and so forth getting from Taiwan to to its destination um, so anyway I've got that tucked in there um, looks pretty good I'm gonna run my hands and fingers up inside there and just double check that it's all seated properly and then we'll move to the next step okay we have our tire reassembled and uh, I have tucked this tire into the groove that's in the rim so there's a, a groove that goes all the way around and then the tire tucks into that groove it's kind of an odd setup to be honest with you it's quite a bit different from the other RC tires I've worked with that just basically fit around the rim and kind of hold tight to the rim kind of like a rubber band and then you of course you put your your super glue um, into that that joint to hold it together to the rim um, this is a little different so anyway I've got it tucked in there of course the back I've never uh, broke that seal with the super glue and um, so that is looks pretty good so now I'm gonna reassemble it put my bead lock on there these bead locks really and Unless I'm completely wrong, which I don't think I am. These bead locks really don't lock the tire on like a real bead lock does and on real vehicles. It does probably s supply a little bit of uh, pressure on the edge of the tire just to secure it there. But uh, I don't really think it does a whole lot. But it sure looks cool, so that's worth something, right? So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and glue all the way around this perimeter, put our bead lock back on, and then we'll put it back on the balancer and see what it looks like. All right, there's our assembled tire. Looks pretty good. I tell you, it has a different feel to it because it's had the foam uh, restored. So it uh, be interesting to see if it's in balance. I tell you one thing, when the truck is being stored, you really should keep the weight off these tires because they're so soft that I think they may have a tendency to flat spot. So it may be good to place something under the vehicle to uh, support the weight so the tires aren't taking it. Um, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and put our, put our uh, hub and hub nut back on. And then with that, we will put our spinner assembly on that goes on to the goes on to our prop balancer well I'll tell you mixed results uh, we have improved it <clears throat> certainly some um, so right there is basically touching and then it swings away a little bit uh, so the tire still has some wobble, but it is greatly reduced. It's it's probably around 0.1 inch of wobble now versus point, a little over 0.2 before. Okay, so we've got the tire back on the truck, and uh, let's see how it does. I can tell you it's a lot better. <laughs> Not perfect, mind you, but it's much better. So here we go. It is the best tire on the truck now, that's for sure. So, yeah, it's got a little bit of wobble. Some of the wobble you're seeing is actually coming from the other tires because they're bouncing around so much, it's shaking the entire truck. Um, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, basically all I did was steam that foam inner liner. And uh, so, we may have uh, solved some of the problem. So I'm gonna switch the truck around and then I'm gonna show you what a bad tire looks like. So let's look one more time. There you go. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. Trust me. And here's what a bad tire looks like. Oh yeah. Can you see how out around that baby is? I have not done anything to that tire. That's how it came out of the box. 
That is terrible. So, uh, I think really Traxxas needs to do something about that. I don't think that's acceptable. And uh, no wonder the vehicle bounces up and down as it drives. And like I said, I'm going to make a FPV rig out of this at some point in the future. And uh, with the tires out, out around, it's not going to work very well for camera stability. Um, and I really don't want to go buy a set of $60 tires when I just bought a brand new truck. I expect the tires to be good. So uh, anyway, a little elbow grease and hopefully I'll have it fixed. Till next time, thanks for watching Project King.